five, six carries. <laughs> But when you look at your guys' defense, why is defensive line depth so important and why is that something you guys have been focusing on? Uh, I would say last year we, I mean, we rolled like Rodas, Geo, Kurt, James, me, Cade, Darian got in there. And you even see that, like, we even had games where James was playing 45 plays, 50, Rodas got in some games, like 51 plays. And Fick just came out this year and said, he goes, you can't do that. He goes, especially with the pace of play at college football today, you need six guys who can play every single snap and the extra people who are good at certain things like I mean you've seen like I come in rundowns or uh Kurt and James are in for our uh team pass periods where it's obviously team pass screen draw but you've got to find people who are good at certain things and you've got to have people who can play every single snap your first through third downs and be able to stop the run in first and second and a rush passer on third do you feel like you guys are better positioned to have the depth that uh, I would say so because when you look at a defense, you've got to get used to the scheme. And not that we were getting used to the scheme all the way through the season last year, but now I'm hearing our play calls and I'm not thinking, all right, a line here, work that way, a line here, do this. I'm hearing it and I'm already subconsciously doing that. So when you've got when you've got a year of it behind your back for the people who are returning, and then you're bringing in people like Eli Hills, who's super explosive, Brandon Lane, who's really freaking strong and fast. Like, you're bringing in a lot of talent who is able to plug and play right there. So I would say we're definitely more fit this season between our returning people to this scheme and the people we added. It's going to be a huge difference. Do you understand why people from the outside might say, like, the defensive line is one of the biggest question marks people have about this team, not knowing what it can provide for the playmaking I mean, those are people who just look at production. That's, I mean, you could... You could put up a stat sheet. They wouldn't even look at what position those people were at. All they care about is how many sacks, TFLs, and tackles are attached to their name. And, I mean, I don't know if you if you watch camp today, there was a lot of plays being made by the D-line. So, uh, like I said, a lot of people question the D-line because they're like, oh, that's a question mark for the defense. They're just looking at production numbers. And last year we had, I don't know, James had a couple sacks. Uh, Kurt helped me create my first sacks. I'm always appreciative of that. But uh, we've definitely brought back a lot of uh, people to the scheme who are going to be better, more not more fit, but more used to playing in this scheme to create more production. And then we brought in some freaking explosive kids of Brandon and Eli. And then Ernest, I mean, Ernest is going to be a really good athlete. He's just got to, I mean, the kid's like 18 years old. He's just got to get used to college football. But And then you see Dylan Johnson, the kid's a freak athlete, super strong and explosive. And then you just got a lot of other guys who are, they know the playbook like the back of their hand. They're in the right place at the right time. When you do that, you create plays. A little, bit of the tough, a little bit of the tough part about your position is that numbers-wise, it's if you're going to just judge on that, it's not always the way to go. Is that a little bit of the frustrating part? Oh, I mean, not that it's – obviously, like, if you're going to put us on the field, you're going to expect us to make plays. So you've got – and, you know, like, you look at Kurt, like, that kid's stats last year live. That kid is a dog. And then if you're going to tell me that that kid can't make any plays because he didn't have any sacks, like, you're wrong. This kid's going to have a minimum five sack season. You know, you talk about uh, how excited you are for the other guys. I mean, how does that help, you know, make you better? How does that excite you as you guys uh, prepare for camp and, you know, prepare for the season? Well, I would say that if, like, obviously I'm super excited about the guys we brought in, but I'm also super excited for myself to be in my second year in this program. Under Fickle, uh, Scruggs is gone. We got Whitlow in, and I'd be I've really liked the transition. I like them both, but Whitlow's a big like. If you're gonna if you're gonna be a dog out there, you're gonna make plays. And you gotta you gotta shoot your shot eventually. Like you can't just sit there and uh, and follow your scheme to be in the right gap. He doesn't want robots. He wants athletes. He I noticed out there too. He's, he always tells you guys to keep it violent. You know what yeah. what is what does that say to you? What's that phrase mean to you? So most people come back from their first two days of camp, and it's. Oh, these are the MAs that you made. You got to be in this gap in this play at this time. Our board said strain and physicality. Like he just wants us to be dogs out there. Right now, he goes, "You're going to be really raw right now." Obviously, we all did spring ball together, but you take the pads off for three months, and you can do indie, you can do individual work during the summer. But until you're feeling up on the chest pads or shoulder pad, you got to get that that strain and physicality back in your mind in every single play. One more here for Ben. We'll get Kurt up here. Do you have a pet at home? Yeah. So, okay, what do you have to do when it comes to 
stuff like this where, oh, you know, like, like when you were here at Camp Fruit. Yeah, I got, I got married in June. I've been with Jess for six years. It's going to be seven in December, but we got married June 8th, so she's back home with the Bulldogs right now. And I'd be lying if when I go to bed at night, it's pretty odd not having them dogs around. I got two Bulldogs. I got a Frenchie and an English Bulldog, Mabel and Nala.